Hello everyone, this is Esther again from Extra Stars Academy and today we will be looking at the organs of speech and in our lesson today we will be looking at the meaning of organs of speech. We'll look at some organs that help in the articulation of English sounds. We'll look at some sounds and also we'll look at some word examples that goes with the sounds. Before we begin, if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, please do subscribe to the channel. And if you like this video, give this video a thumbs up. If you have a question or something to say, please you can say it in the comment section. The organs of speech are the different parts of the human body involved in the production of speech sounds. They are also known as articulators. They help in one way or the other in producing speech sounds. The speech sounds could be sounds of the English language or our native languages. Now you should know that the lips alone does not produce speech sounds. We have different organs of speech that help in producing speech sounds. Let's take a look at some of these organs of speech. We have the lips, the teeth, the tongue, the nostril, the alveolar ridge, the hard palate, the soft palate, also known as the vellum, the uvula, the esophagus, the glottis, the epiglottis, the pharynx, the larynx, the vocal cords, and even the lung. Now also note that the oral cavity is involved when you make use of the mouth. Then the nasal cavity is involved when you make use of the nose. Good. Okay, let's begin with the lips. The lips are the two soft edges outside the mouth. They are divided into two. We have the upper lip and the lower lip. The lips could assume a number of shapes in producing speech sounds. They could be rounded, neutral, or spread. The lips play a crucial role in forming certain sounds in English. Consonants produced using the two lips are called bilabial sounds, as in p, in pan, and b, in ban. In the production of p and b, air comes out through the mouth. They are oral sounds. So you notice that your lips are involved when you're producing the sound p and b. That's why they're called bilabial sounds. But when the lips are tightly pressed and there is a total obstruction of airflow, air comes out through the nose producing a sound called bilabial nasal sound, as in mmm. Mm. You find out that the soft palate is separated from the pharyngeal to allow airflow into the nasal cavity. Mmm in man. So when you're producing the sound mmm, the lips are tightly pressed, but the air doesn't come out through the mouth, so it's not an oral sound. The air comes out through the nose, and that's why you call it a bilabial nasal sound. Consonant produced using the lower lip and the upper front teeth are called labial dental sounds, as in f in fan and v in van. Now let's take a look at the teeth. The teeth are the hard white objects located inside the mouth immediately after the lips. They're divided into two. We have the upper set and the lower set. Sounds produced using the teeth with the tongue in between the upper and lower teeth are called dental sounds, as in th, in thing, and th, in this. So when you make use of the upper and the lower front teeth, the sounds produced are called dental sounds. We have it in the sounds with the H in thing and the 
this. Good. Consonant produced with the upper teeth making contact with the lower lip are called labial dental sounds, as in f, fan and v, van. Great. The next speech organ we have is the tongue. The tongue is the soft part of the mouth that moves around. It is the most flexible and can move from one position to another. It is the most important articulator in English and it is used to produce a wide range of sounds. It is very important in speech production because without the tongue, you can hardly speak. The tongue is divided into four parts. The tip of the tongue, the blade of the tongue, also known as the edges, the front of the tongue, and the back of the tongue. For example, the front part of the tongue is used to produce sounds like t, d, and s. You find out that the front part of your tongue is raised when you're producing the sound t, d, and s. While the back part of the tongue is used to produce sounds like g, g, and mm. You find the strain at the back of the tongue when you produce sounds like k, g, and mm. So the tongue is the most important articulator in English. Next, we have the alveolar ridge. It is also called the teeth ridge. It is the rim of flesh at the base of the inner part of the upper front teeth. It is the bony ridge just behind the upper front teeth. It is a part where the teeth touches the gum. Yes, that's the teeth ridge. The part where the teeth touches the gum. Now, sounds produced with the tip of the tongue pointing towards the alveolar ridge or slightly touching the alveolar ridge. Those sounds are called alveolar sounds. As in t. Ten and d, den. And we also have it in sip and z, zip. And also we have it in nap and lap. You find that, that in the production of these sounds, the tip of the tongue is pointing towards the alveolar ridge or slightly touching the alveolar ridge. So these sounds are called alveolar sounds. Yeah, so we have it. The organs of speech involved in the production of speech sounds in English. Now we've gone through all the organs of speech and you know the organs involved in the production of speech sounds. The lips alone does not produce speech sounds. We have different organs together with the lips that produce speech sounds. When you're speaking, take note of the organs of speech you use, the organs of speech involved in the production of your speech sounds. If you like this video, give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, do subscribe to the channel, Extra Stars Academy, and press the bell icon so you'll be notified of more of our uploads. So we'll meet again now in the next class to take care. Stay safe. Bye-bye.